two boxes, and a pulley. Two boxes are connected by a massless, non-stretchable cord and a massless, frictionless pulley. The coefficient of kinetic friction between box A and the table, that's here, is 0 0.20. That tells you we're going to deal with friction here. The mass of box A is 5 kilograms. The mass of box B is 2 kilograms. Draw a free body diagram for box A, then B, then find the acceleration of the two boxes, and finally, find the tension in the cord connecting boxes A and B. Let's work with box A first, because that's what we're asked to do. We have a cord coming out of box A, out of the front of it. So that's a tension force to the right, which we will call F sub T. The tension force on an object always points in the same direction that the cord comes out of the object. The friction force acts to the left in the opposite of the box's motion. And then, of course, we have the normal force and the gravitational force up and down. And which way is this box moving? To the right, so our acceleration, we expect it to be the right. Let's move to box B. A cord comes out of the top of box B, so there is a tension force in the up direction, F sub t. The tension force on an object always points in the same direction that the cord comes out of the object. There's no normal force here. This box is not in contact with another box. The only other force we have is the gravitational force. Notice how we've sketched this a little bigger than the tension force because we know the box is going to go like this, so this force here has to be greater than this force. And the acceleration is in the down direction. Now we'll write Newton's second law equations for box A. Well, in the x direction, all right, here's my sum of the forces in the x direction. We have tension force to the right, so that's positive. Friction force is negative to the left. And our acceleration is to right, so that's positive. Let's look in the y direction, the vertical direction for box A. Well, we have the sum of the forces, m sub a times acceleration. We have the normal force. Notice we have a subscript there. Even though it's the only normal force, we'll keep it there anyway just for uh, it's good practice. Gravitational force is down, so it's negative. Our acceleration is zero. The box is not moving up and down, so there is no acceleration in the y direction. And we're going to need that this time because we have to calculate what? We have to calculate the friction force. So we need the normal force. So here's our Newton's law equations for both the x and y direction for box A. The y equation, all right, before we've never used, we haven't used this one yet in this uh, problem solving session, but we need it to find the friction force. We need to calculate normal to find the friction force. And here's our x direction forces. Before we calculate the friction force on box A, let's go ahead and uh, do box B here. We only have forces acting in the y direction, right? We've got tension going up and gravitational force going down. The acceleration is in the down direction also. So the sum of the forces is m sub b times A. Tension's positive, up direction. Gravitational force, negative, down direction. And the acceleration is down, so we stick the negative A in there. And then we come up with tension minus m sub b g equals minus m sub b a. We now have two equations to solve for the acceleration, but we have three unknowns. The unknowns are the tension force, the friction force, and the acceleration. This is not good. We have to do a little more work. What do you think we're going to do? I think we're going to find the friction force now. Now let's see if we can get rid of the friction force here. Well, the first step is the friction force is mu k times normal force. So here's our equation from the previous slide. We will substitute in mu k f sub n in, in place of friction. So instead of friction force, we have mu k times fn. We can go further now. We also know from the y direction for box A that we have the normal force on box A minus m sub a g equals zero because the box isn't bouncing up and down. So that tells us that the normal force on box A is m sub a times g. So do you see what we're going to do next? Yep, 
can probably get rid of the normal force here next. Finally, our two equations and three unknowns have been reduced to two equations and two unknowns, and we can continue solving the problem. So from the previous slide, we had box A was mu k times a normal plus m a times acceleration. And what was the normal equal to? m sub a g. So it's substituted in for the normal force. So we have our equation right here. Just repeated it here at the bottom to separate it. And here's our other equation for box B. Our two equations with two unknowns are right here. Now they're both expressed in terms of the tension. So we will use the method of setting the two equations equal to each other because they're both equal to tension. So here's the box A equation over here. And here is the box B equation. We set them equal. First thing we're going to do is move all the components of this that have A to the left side and all the ones with G to the right side. Now we're skipping a couple of steps here because we've done this before with the Atwoods machine. So let me just talk through it. Here's your M sub A A on the left side. That's good. It's already there. Now to get M sub B times A to the left side, what do we have to do? Add M sub B A to both sides so it will cancel out here and show up over here. And we said add so it has a plus side. So that's good. We've got all our acceleration on the left side. Now let's look at the terms with g in it. Well, m sub bg is already here. We need to move this guy, mu k m sub a g, over to the other side. How do we do that? We need to subtract it from both sides. So when you subtract it from the left side, it goes away, and we have to subtract it from the right side. So there you go. There's the negative. So here we have it. We have all the terms with acceleration on the left side, terms with the accelerate with G are all on the right side. And we'll just erase this so we can go on to our next steps. And the next step will be to factor out an A on the left side. So we have A times M sub A plus M sub B. On the left side, we factor out a G. So we have M sub B minus mu K M sub A. One last step. Divide both sides by m sub a plus m sub b, so we totally isolate a, and here is our answer. Before we proceed with the numerical uh, substitution here, if you didn't quite follow the work on the previous slide, please go back to the Atwoods machine section of this general problems, where we took you step by step to show you how we moved all the quantities with acceleration to the left side of the equation and all the quantities with g to the right side. So if you're okay with that, here's our equation. Now we just plug in the numbers. Now can you imagine plugging the numbers in earlier for all these different quantities with the equations and getting something? That would be very hard to do. So the idea is just do it at the end where we have all the numbers. And this is bad enough, but at least we can kind of keep track of what we have. We have the mass of B minus the coefficient of friction, which is unitless, times the mass, which is in kilograms. And there's your kilograms. Then you have your acceleration G due to gravity on the right. And then on the bottom, we add the two masses, and we have kilograms again. And you can note, please, that the kilograms cancel out, and we get an acceleration of 1.4 meters per second squared. Find the tension in the cord. Well, we have two ways we can do it. We can work with box A, or we can work with box B. We'll do both of them. So the horizontal, which is box A, here's our equation for tension. And look, what's the first thing we do? We don't just put the numbers in. We factor out M sub A. OK, so we say that down here. Factor out the masses so the math is easier. You plug in your numbers again, and we get 17 newtons. Okay, we have kilograms, meters per second squared, that's a newton. Then we do the vertical equation, and we get this equation. Once again, we factor out the mass. So it looks like this would be the easier one to use because we don't have to worry about the coefficient of friction. And as hopefully expected, we get the same tension force.